The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Thursday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN. Just after 9 a.m. Eastern time, we got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and we got some action. Action. Uh, we got stocks in the positive. NASDAQ 100 accelerating higher. We have the Dow just in red territory, but let's go over it. S&P's right now. We're up by 15 points. You see a little volatility around 8.30. We get the weekly jobless claims. You're talking about lowest number that we've seen since September of 2022. Weekly jobless claims come in at 187,000 for the week ended January 13th. Continuing claims, 1.806. We'll call it 1.81, I guess. The estimate was 1.83. The economy is strong, man. You can't deny that. But nonetheless, the market takes it and runs with it. You're talking about right now, which is remarkable, on the heels of good economic data, right? What do we have in yields? We have a higher yield, but you got stocks not worried about it, man. Stocks plowing higher. You get the NASDAQ 100, 17,000. We're 300 points above where you were at the lows of yesterday. Quite the acceleration. We have an Apple upgrade. They're talking about that in the Tiger's Den today as well. So we got a lot to talk about. Let's kick it off with the S&Ps. Up by 15 points at 47.87. NASDAQ 100, we just mentioned, at 17,000 on the dot. You got the Dow right now. Only a major index in negative territory. The Dow off 74 points, trading at 37,384. That's two tenths percent in the red. You got the Russell right now, up by half a percent at 1934. Bitcoin. Down 365 bucks, 42,445. Crude catches a little bit of a bid. We're right at 73 bucks as I speak. 7301, you're up by 52 pennies. You jump over to the gold contract. Gold, up by $6. We were as high as almost 2020. You're trading at 2012 right now. Silver, down by nine pennies, 2257. And you jump to notes and bonds. And we got lower price and higher yield. The market don't care, man. That Apple upgrade, of course, doing some things. But you get the 10 year right now, almost approaching 4.12. What are we at right now? Yeah, 4.12, pretty much on the dot, 4.12, the yield on the 10-year right now. And we got the 30-year, down about 10 ticks, 120.15. We jump over to the volatility index. We've seen the VIX spike 15.40. The spike yesterday, we're trading right now at 14.38 as a little bit of that volatility premium gets sucked out of this market. All right, we jump over to Apple. That'll be a pop for you. It's amazing what one analyst can do, man. Apple gets an upgrade, the market listens. And boy, you talk about an acceleration, man. And let's jump over to it. I thought I had it. Where is it? Shame on me. Too much to talk about this morning. I got lost in my own headlines. All right, I'll find it again. But Apple gets an upgrade this morning. Just had it up here, too. Where were we? Here we go. Yeah, Bank of America. Okay, I'll find it. Can't find the article I was just looking at. Nonetheless, they get a Bank of America upgrade. You're talking about an upgrade that puts the price target about 20% above where you're trading at right now. They're talking about AI potentially helping phone sales. Nonetheless, Apple, a much needed break as you're $4 to the upside. Remember, Apple's got about 15 billion shares outstanding. You're talking about just on the open alone, you're going to add $60 billion in market cap to Apple. Pretty interesting, right? The numbers. That's why when, when people talk about, you know, Apple purchasing maybe ESPN, maybe purchasing Disney outright. Some analysts put ESPN in the neighborhood of 40, 50, 60 billion dollars, maybe something like that. That entity alone as part of Disney would command that type of a purchase price. Four dollars, that's all it is in the share price. 60 billion dollars for Apple. They're going to open to the upside. We jump around to Microsoft. Whoops, MSFT. Come on. Microsoft shares. They catch a bit as well, this chart, man. Microsoft pushing 391 this morning. What is that? Are we going to be at the three, the three trillion mark? 2.91. Yeah, 2.91 for, for Microsoft. And you jump over to Apple right now. 2.89. 
They're in the race again, neck and neck. Apple and Microsoft are the biggest company in the world. Both of them trading higher today as we get the NASDAQ 100 surging higher. All right, let's get over to the jobless claims number. Jobless claims come in at 187,000 for the week ended January 13th. Among states, New York, steepest decline, falling 17,000. Continuing claims, we mentioned, 1.81. They were looking for about 1.83. Pretty remarkable when you look at both of these numbers, right? You really want to keep your eye on the four-week average for that jobs number, the week, the initial claims. A lot of variance on a weekly basis in that number especially. Tough to deny. We're not coming down, man. Now, what does that mean for the economy when it comes to price stability, though? That's what you want to ask yourself. That's what I ask myself. What does that mean for the economy when it comes to price stability? If we have under 200000 initial jobless claims on a weekly basis, and we've seen the wage numbers that are coming in, yeah, a robust, despite elevated interest rates. Pretty remarkable, right? We're dealing with an interest rate between five and a quarter and 5.5%, and everybody's got a job. It's not how it's supposed to work. It's not how inflation's supposed to be tamed. We'll see if it will. Yeah. All right, talking about home applications. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, home builders. Housing starts decline while building permits pick up. This news out this morning as well. Residential starts decreased 4.3% last month. 1.46 million annualized rate government showed this morning. Single family home construction fell by the most since July of 2022 following a, no a surge in November. Probably a lot of variance in these on a month to month basis as well, right? You get a surge in November, you get a little bit of a pullback. Building permits, which indicate future construction, 1.5 million pace. Applications for one-family homes rose to the strongest pace since May of 2022, and multifamily authorizations edged higher as well. Total housing starts up here in the red. Permits for one-family homes, man, right? People are ramping it up all year. Check it out, the permits. Yeah, the pickup in building permits suggests new construction will remain on an upward trend as lower mortgage rates boost demand for housing. And with homeowners still mostly reluctant to move, buyers have been finding more inventory in the new homes market, which helped build lifter sentiment this month. Where do those rates need to get until somebody thinks about selling? That's an interesting conversation to have, right? Where do the rates need to get? Uh, below where they are right now, but the Fed hasn't even started cutting yet. And the market's gotten a little bit ahead of itself right now. But interesting that you have quite the acceleration. An Apple an Apple boost will do it. And uh, what else is tied into that, though? They're talking about AI with Apple, Bank of America. And what do you have happening? You get the chip stocks running again. They're not stopping, folks. AMD up another $6. It's going to be what? Almost a 4% pop on the open. You were at 145 last Friday. You were at 166 this morning. NVIDIA shares not stopping. You were at 545 last week. You're at 575 this morning. You're up another $13. That's going to be another what? Two, two and a half percent pop on the open for NVIDIA shares as they continue to accelerate higher. Pretty remarkable. These tech stops just, just remarkably strong. No matter what they face, even when we have technically higher yields, right? I mean, look at the pop that we've gotten at the same time that we've seen yields go from 4% to now 4.12. So in a rising yield environment, these stocks don't care, man. So that's something to pay attention to as well as they're shaking it off and they know they can make money at this number and when yields go down. We'll be right back, folks. Lots to talk about. Don't go away. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps right now trading higher by 18 points as this market just drifts higher. NASDAQ 100, you're up by about 140. Jump back to an article from the journal this morning. And we've talked about this before, man, and it's going to be in focus as these rates change because, boy, we have quite a risk-free interest rate environment right now. When you talk about money markets, you talk about CDs, right? We've talked about – let's just pull it up. As I talk to you, I'm going to pull up that five-year ladder. We talked about that many times before when we were earning over – over 5 percent was the number on a five-year ladder, which was remarkable. We're not there anymore, man. Let's pull it up as I do. Yeah, we're talking about right now in this environment. What are we at? Come on. You're at 4.3 about. 4.28 is the number on a five-year ladder. And that number is derived from the fact that a five-year, folks, you're familiar, a ladder, right? You're taking a one, two, three, four, and five-year CD. The one year is at about 4.75. Now, pay attention, man. A one-year CD right now, okay, a 12-month CD is only paying you 4.75%. Now, I say that because, you know, a money market rate right now might be paying you 5 and a quarter to 5.5% almost, okay? And that is because we have cuts priced in. Now, a five-year ladder brings you to about 4.3. A two-year is 4.35. So think about that. Right, and that's because a three years four two five, a four years at about four percent, a five years at about four percent. But you're at about four point three percent. Still a pretty decent return over a five year basis when you get to recalibrate those yearly returns on a twelve month basis, rolling those every time. Now the conversation of this. Here's the headline: eight point eight trillion dollars in cash that has the stock market bulls salivating. The reason why I always want to focus on this is that number one, yes, there is cash on the sidelines. Okay. But it's not $8.8 .8 that's going to come back into equities, okay? Where that number is, it's somewhere between 0 and $8.8 .8 trillion, but it's not $8.8 .8 trillion, and it's probably not even close. Take a look at this chart. This is all you really got to take a, a look at, okay? Now, how about money market funds in 1985, man? <laughs> Nothing, right? They just started. Look at the ramp up. They're sitting at above $6 trillion right now. $6 trillion. You add on CDs in there, and you're pushing almost $9 trillion. That's crazy, man. Now, to keep in mind here, okay, 
is that these numbers were also very high in a very low interest rate environment, okay? Remember where interest rates were in, I mean, even as we came into COVID, okay? This was a ramp up up through 2020. This did not happen. This is the ramp up that happened during COVID. It's only your last tale. We came into COVID with what, $6 trillion almost? You could call it almost $7 trillion. Tough to see exactly where that acceleration took place. But the point being is, yeah, they we have $8.8 trillion in cash, but we had $6 trillion in cash when interest rates were near zero. How is that happening? Who's in a money market fund? What, what $3 trillion was sitting in a money market fund? And this is the real bummer of it, folks, right? $3 trillion sitting in a money market fund from the year 2010 to the year 2018, earning basically nothing. And over that period of time, from 2010 to 2018, you have the market going up two and a half fold. S&Ps go from about 1,000 over that time to 2,500, right? at a time when we had interest rates, man. I mean, let's pull up the, the tenure. Probably goes back that far, right? Yeah. I mean, look where we were in the tenure, right? Pretty lofty levels in terms of low, higher price, lower yield, okay? So don't get confused to think that there's $8 trillion in cash that's gonna come running back for this market, okay? There's a substantial amount of money that is parked in those vehicles that it is not coming back to the market and always has been in those vehicles. Now, you can make the very real case, though, that what? We were at an easy $6.2 trillion and we're now at $8.8 .8 trillion and that acceleration has taken place since COVID and in the rise of high interest rates, and that is going to be the recalibration. Where does that money go from $6.2 to $8.8 .8 trillion? Where does that money go when interest rates come back down? to a much lower level than what we're seeing right now. Listen, they, they, they have anecdotal people they're talking about here, okay? They have a 37-year-old pharmacist. Seems like he's got 800 grand stowed away. Good for him, 37 grand with 800 grand towed away, stowed away. He's got 10% of his overall assets in money market funds. That's 80 grand, okay? And, in, and inflation-adjusted savings bonds, I-bonds. He plans to eventually use that cash to buy rental property. He's looking at inflation every time. If he's not earning at least 1.5% above inflation, then he's going to start thinking about different strategies. Well, that's going to change in the next 12 to 18 months, his strategy at least, okay? You're not going to be getting that type of interest rate above inflation in the next 12 or 18 months is what I imagine. Yeah, they have another woman here talking about uh, hard to pass up CDs over 5.5%, particularly for seven months. That's not a bad deal. But 12 months or longer, I don't want to walk, lock away cash for that long. I'm young. I want to take more risks. Yeah, at, at 26 years old, I think that's what they said, I would be g dumping a lot of that money into growth stops, stocks, Elizabeth. Um, 26 years old is not where you need to be. Now, if you are near the upper echelons of retirement, though, man, whew, I would be seriously considering still getting four point. I mean, you're still getting 4.3% on a five-year lap to, to go over how in retirement, okay? One of the rules that they use in retirement, if you're properly diversified, right? If you have enough assets to make it through retirement, that is your nest egg. You don't want to work again, right? You take out about 4% a year, and that usually keeps you pretty safe where you never go BK, right? Because 4% a year is going to change every year. And um, you're going to have winning years, you're going to have losing years. But if you can live on about 4% of your retirement nest egg a year, you should be okay in retirement as that money is going to grow enough to make sure that you can take out that 4% without diminishing your capital to a degree that you're going to be in trouble at any point. Well, depending on where you are in retirement, folks, if you're taking out 4% a year and right here on a five-year ladder, you're making 4.3%, okay, pretty cool that you're not touching your capital. Meanwhile, your expenses are paid for. Very different scenario when you look at a 26-year-old, though. I'm talking about literally in retirement. I'm talking about you're a couple years away. Outside of that, I encourage you to have some stock exposure, folks. We're in quite an acceleration right now. I talked to Tim Ord on my dad's program a couple days ago. We were looking at A to B, C to Ds all over this market, man. He had price targets between maybe 5,300, 5,700 was talked about in the S&P at one point. 
And one thing I want to point out a little bit bigger picture as well, okay, is that take this into consideration. We are at all-time highs for all intents and purposes. We're trading at 4,800. We're trading at 4,787. The all-time highs back from 2022, 4,808 within 20 points. We're at all-time highs, okay? But what does that $4,800 in the S&P buy you? And what did it buy you two years ago? You could make a very real case that it's what? I mean, maybe you had two years at 5% in there somewhere, right? Somewhere in that realm. Point being, it doesn't have the same buying power. So don't get distracted to say, man, how is it at all time highs? How is it gonna go higher? You can make a very real case that this market could go at least 10% higher and your buying power for that price is just gonna be the same as it was two years ago. We gotta catch up in, with inflation in this market. We're coming back for the open, TFNN folks. Don't go away. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You got the S&P up about 16 points right now. NASDAQ 100, you're up by 151. We got the Dow in negative territory off by 115 points. That's about three tenths percent in the red. We got the Russell up by 15 at 1940. Great discussion in the den talking about, yeah, Fidelity does have a great money market. They're pushing about 5% right now, right at 5%, the money market, depending where you have your money, you might be a little bit lower than that. Um, some brokerages accounts really give you no action, man. So look into that number. 
but you're talking about about 5% um, on a money market risk-free overnight right now, which is not bad, man, considering where we are in this economy. Risk-free rate of return, haven't seen that in a while. All right, what else we got going on? A little bit of geopolitical tensions rising. Uh, keep your eye on this one. Nothing too outlandish just yet, but you got Pakistan conducting strikes in Iran, retaliating for earlier hit by Tehran. Pakistan officials says 20 Pakistani militants have been killed. Pakistan carried out airstrikes early Thursday inside Iranian territory in retaliation for Iranian airstrike in Pakistan on Tuesday that had targeted Iranian insurgents. Now, what they're saying here is that the two nations were careful to say that they had only targeted their own nationals in the tit-for-tat strikes, an indication that neither country wants the situation to spiral, experts said, but risks of miscalculation remain amid heightened tensions in the Middle East. I mean, anytime you got nations, particularly nations like Pakistan and Iran, striking Pakistan and Iran over their border, um, and you tie it into everything else, right? Tehran's trying to show strength as it's in an indirect confrontation with the U.S., so they're trying to flex their muscles in the same way. Um, Pakistan got sucked into that demonstration of Iran's resolve, which also saw Tehran hit targets in Syria and Iraq this week. So there's an escalation, to say the least, man. Pay attention to that one nonetheless, though. What do we got? We got crude. Trading right now at 72.93. We take a look at the dollar index this morning. You jump over to the DXY. We hit a high of 103.69 yesterday. Today, we're backing off a bit yet again. And that is even, yeah, with yields, I guess we were chopping around to yesterday. You know, I found myself between talking to Tim Ward on Tuesday, okay, and he's going to be on the show this afternoon. But I found myself thinking, okay, as we've gotten a little bit of a reprieve in yields, we're now sitting at what, 4.12, I think, 4.11? Let's see where we are right now on yields. 4.11 is the yield on the 10-year, okay? It's been quite a nice pop from where we were at the lows. We're now back to basically where you were at the lows of 2022, okay? And I found myself saying, you know what? This is Maybe this was the one reprieve, right? Market, market got ahead of itself in terms of lower price and higher yield. And then what happened, though, is that in the reverberation – market probably got a little bit ahead of itself when we floated to the end of December with yields plummeting to, what, 3.9, 3.87, something like that, probably getting a little bit ahead of itself. Well, we've clawed back a quarter point already, okay? And I take that conversation and I shift it to the gold contract because I think this might be the breakout, man. If you haven't signed, signed up for the Gold Report, folks, you never tried out the Gold Report. Even if you have, you want to try it out again. Great time to try out the Gold Report right now with what's going on. And I found myself saying, you know what? Maybe that was the pullback before this thing really charges higher, right? Maybe that was the pullback. Maybe that's re the reverberation in yields we get, as in we all have a feeling that the cuts are coming. The Fed has told us that three cuts are coming. The market thinks that potentially six cuts are coming. You still have money market rates at 5%, right? I just talked about it. Uh, you still have a five-year ladder pulling you 4.3%. All of that's going to come down as the Fed cuts, man, okay? And where does that leave things? Well, what does that do? As the Fed cuts, that's going to bring in some dollar weakness, and dollar weakness will add to strength in commodities. So yeah, at two thousand dollars on gold right now, you got that one initial spike. Pretty remarkable. That's six weeks ago, man. I remember that spike, December fourth. Remember my dad saying, "I don't know, man. I don't know about that spike. It was a Sunday night spike. Market wasn't even open. You spike there on Sunday night before the market was even open on Monday. You were already back to two thousand and fifty, I think, something like that. Okay. So we're sitting back at two thousand now. Yet again, we've had a little bit of a reverberation in yields. We have the market very strong right now. And we have the dollar that has gotten quite a pop from the 101 to 103.50 area. But what have you done? All you've done is you've gotten back to the 382. Okay, so watch this dollar. You really start to get a rollover in the dollar, man. You're sitting at 103.50. And then we take a little bit of a longer term picture of the dollar. I mean, any time prior to May of 2022, and you are at highs on this chart back to 2004. Well, what does that mean? That means that we have some room to the downside if we really get going here. 
And boy, if you ever get a real acceleration to the downside in the dollar, watch out for that gold contract, man. Watch out for that gold contract. Now, we jump over to the end, which ties in as well, right? We've seen dollar strength, yen weakness. Boy, it's been quite the acceleration. I was talking to our man Teddy Kegstat yesterday, this thing pushing 148 after being at 140 on January 2nd. Same thing here. This is going to roll over eventually, man. You're pushing the all-time highs yet again. We made that high October of 22nd. Is it all-time? No, not all-time when you go back, of course. Uh, we'll call these cycle highs, okay? Basically, the highest that you had been since, what, 1990? Something like that. I mean, look at this. Look at where we're sitting in the end right now, okay? Things are about to change, folks. The Bank of Japan, uh, some great insight from Teddy. If you didn't check out that interview yesterday, he just had quite a great wrap up of all the different currencies you can always check that out on our youtube page but you know looking for investment ideas looking for trade ideas looking where we are with yields looking where we are with the dollar looking where we are with gold and i know i'm biased being my dad's son uh but boy we are pushing these highs man and it seems like a breakout might be in the cards and it would make sense if you look at the fundamentals so you got the technicals pushing these highs right chopping around near the 2000 price point okay we're 2014 2000 is the price point man we've been chopping around pushing that price level since august of 2020 you hit 2089 you hit 2078 you hit 2085 you got that false breakout on a sunday night and we're still chopping at that level now pretty remarkable when you look at where you are, where the highs were in 2011, and how it lines up with potentially the Fed cuts, a little bit of dollar weakness, and how that could be the impetus to get gold above that 2000 price point in a real way. And yeah, it shouldn't be surprising that that's possibly in the cards, and we'll see where we go. But keep your eye on the dollar. That's going to mean, right, if you're a gold bull, what do you want to see? You want to see dollar weakness, man. That's what you want to see. Because this strength that we are pushing at 104 right now We've only been above that level a few times since 2022, man. You made it above that level, of course, late in 2022. Yeah, but not quite the case, sitting at 103.40. But you get the point. So check out that gold report if you get a chance, folks. Because that might be your opportunity, man. This might have been the pullback. Right? Back to the daily one more time. We're coming back to that 2000 area. I mean, look where we are. We're basically at lows since November 27th in that gold contract. All right, folks, stay tuned. We'll take a look at some of the other equities. We'll take a look at Apple when we get back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
the Chapman Way of Up-Down Sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps just holding those uh, positive gains. A little bit of a pullback on the open right now. We're trading up by 13 points. You see the volatility at 8.30. We're a size about 47.92. You spiked to 47.97 on the opening bell. We've just been chopping around that 47.90 area. We're positive by 13 points. NASDAQ 100, we're positive by a full percent right now, 17,037. Yeah, you're within about 1% of all-time highs, 17,165. We jump over to Apple shares. Apple catches a lift, up about $4, right where it was pre-market, 187.01 on their upgrade. <clears throat> Excuse me. We jump over to some of the other AI stocks. NVIDIA up by 2.4% right now. AMD shares, it's not stopping, man, up by 4.8% right now. Pretty remarkable. All right, talking a little geopolitical out here. It's not just Iran and Pakistan, man. That Red Sea, I'm not sure how that's happening. Yeah, crews increasingly unwilling to navigate southern Red Sea. I'm not sure what kind of hazard pay they're getting, but I bet it's not worth it. Three bulk carriers hit by projectiles in space of three days. Right? Um, yeah, so you have missiles now, Right? Airstrikes on Yemen, bringing a new level of chaos to shipping in the southern Red Sea. I don't know how this one ends, man. I mean, that's 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 all there is there. Um, yeah, and I don't know how who is sending those ships uh, through that passage at this point. Yeah, insurers responded by restricting cover. Who's insuring the the, the ships going through there, right? Very uncertain time, to put it lightly, but that area ratcheting up as well. And that one's a very difficult one to see how it eases. You're not dealing with some cohesive government that you can really, you know, work with, to put it lightly. All right, we talk a little bit of cars. Hyundai and Kia emerge as Tesla's biggest U.S. rival on EVs. Now, Hyundai and Kia are great car companies, man. I talk about myself all the time. I've been looking at three row SUVs. Okay. If you are in the market for a three year row SUV and you want bucket seats in the second row, which I tell you folks, we rented a Ford Expedition Max when we went to the mountains in November. And those bucket seats in the second row, they open up the whole car when you got bucket seats. With kids, you walk around them, right? You put one where you got space on the floor, all this stuff. So anyway, when looking at three row SUVs, really don't need one just yet. But I love the second row bucket, okay? Second row bucket seats. And if you're looking for a smaller three row SUV with bucket seats in the second row and you're looking for the best car, best bang for your buck, okay? Not like the best car out there because that's probably gonna be some premium car that's that's uh, loaded with bells and whistles and a little bit expensive. But the best bang for your dollar, Kia Telluride, man, is an awesome vehicle. I don't own one, I don't own these shares, 
But if you're in the market for a three-row SUV, you find one with bucket seats in the second row. They are great vehicles, man. You can find a used one for thirty grand. That's like just awesome. New ones range in the area of fifty grand. Now, the GMC Yukon. Ooh, that's a nice one. Uh, and that's that's that's. Uh, but that's where you push like a hundred grand. Okay, so bang for your buck. Not sure it's worth two Kia Tellurides. Nonetheless, I digress. They're great, great car companies. So yeah. Tesla better be aware of what's going on when you got Hyundai and Kia coming after you, man. Um, they captured the number two slot last year in U.S. electric vehicles, trailing only Tesla behind their growth, which last year outpaced both Tesla and the broader EV market, is an aggressive bet on technology that was placed last decade and has yet to materialize. Yeah. So what are they doing? A broader lineup of EV is than many virals with bet with. I'll start over. A broader lineup of EVs than many rivals, including Tesla, with battery technology that allows for fast charging speeds and models ranging from large family hauling SUVs to cheaper battery powered crossovers. Okay. They took advantage of the EV credit rules. They stepped up and made the investment. And um, yeah, and they got a good combo, man. Yeah, as recently a decade ago, not the case anymore, man. Hyundai and Kia were seen as underdogs churning out inexpensive vehicles, but that image has shifted, especially as EVs, EV sales have taken off. Yeah, and um, they're coming for it, man. And check out this chart. It's all you got to see. You look at where Hyundai was. I mean, look at the, the gap, man. You go from 58000 to 94000 Tesla went from 522 to 644. Tesla only added 120,000 vehicles. Hyundai added 50, 40,000 vehicles. But percentage-wise, huge numbers, right? And you see the gap. They're all catching up. Tesla's got some problems. The biggest problem for Tesla is probably China, man, in terms of their car companies, right? For 55,000, you can get a Kia or a Cadillac EV. Those two don't usually compete against each other is what they talk about, right? Um, Hyundai. Its luxury brand Genesis and Kia combined now sell nine electric models and account for 8% of electric car sales from the $32,000 Kona to the Kia EV9, a large seven-seater SUV that starts at $55,000 and is favored by buyers with families. So that Kia EV9, that's going to be even bigger than the Telluride I talked about. Telluride, I don't think, is electric at this point, which is why it hasn't been talked about in this article. But boy, they got some good vehicles, man. Yeah, Tesla by comparison, they only have five models, and the cheapest one starts at thirty-nine grand, right? Yeah. Look at their span. Yeah, so pay attention to that one, man. Keep them on your radar, and if you are looking for a vehicle, uh, he is a great vehicle for your dollar, man. Maybe the best bang for your buck, like I've talked about before. Great SUV on a three-row basis. Yeah, what's the lease on a Kia EV9? I don't know, Duffy. Does anybody know? Uh, lease has some great deals occasionally, man. I, I was, I at least, uh, my, I have a BMW coupe, and I at least BMW coupes for some time. BMW has some great deals, man, to push out some of their more inexpensive models via lease, right? When you got BMW, you got your Mercedes, they're always trying to be the number one premium luxury brand and so because of that they really push out the vehicles on a lease basis to try and get those numbers nonetheless all right what else do we got i take that and we jump to more cars we got honda we covered hyundai we covered kia honda sometimes confused with hyundai but nonetheless 2024 u.s sales climbing 10 percent with a boost from hybrids we go from evs to hybrids man Continued growth at more modest pace. 1.3 million vehicles sold last year. They expect to hit 1.4 million vehicles this year for the first time, fueled mostly by demand for its hybrid and gas-powered models. Not EV, right? Not EV. Honda sales in the U.S. soared 33% last year to 1.3. They're going to come in at 1.4, they think, this year. I mean, look at that run. Yeah, everybody declined in 2022. It is remarkable, though, when you look at something like that, when you go to Honda and Acura, you were at 1.6 million in 2007. It's been a tough, uh, what are you going to be? You're almost at 20 years, man, for that company. 
remarkable. And we take that opportunity to go over to Hertz, because guess what? Hertz is, uh, they got a big upgrade. They're up by 9%. Analysts talking about, guess what? Selling 20,000 electric vehicles, probably the best thing they could have done. EVs, not having a good week. Stay tuned, folks. We got Tesla shares. They're flat at 215. We got one more segment. We'll be right back, folks. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps holding on to gains, but we faded a bit. We're at basically session lows. That's a 15-minute. Let's put it on a one-minute just so you can see the volatility. We open the market at about 930. You trade up to just above 4790. About the last 15 minutes or so, we've had some negative action in the market. NASDAQ 100 still holding pretty strong above 17,000. Go back to a five-minute chart. 17,013, the Dow, negative territory, 37,330 right now, and the Russell is flat. We jump around. Some of the airlines, Delta up about three tenths percent. We jumped to Boeing and a tough week for Boeing. They're bouncing a bit, kind of right off that 200 number, right? We're at 207. And remember, if you're looking for a bounce on Boeing, man, 220 is going to be a problem yet again. That was the area that you were going to. That's the area that you had resistance for the better part of the beginning of 2023. We're going to face resistance yet again, I assume. All right, we talk a little bit of Fed. One of the last comments we get as we go into... Uh, Almost quiet period. Next meeting is January, January 31st. This article talking about Raphael Bostic, reiterating his view that rate cuts are going to start 
in the third quarter. Now he says anything can happen, right? They all say anything can happen. He is a voting member, okay? So pay attention to what he's saying. Still looking for evidence that inflation is on track to the 2% goal. Says he still sees bumpy price data. What he talks about in here is the last thing you want is for policies to policymakers to lower rates and then have to raise them again, right? He's expecting it's going to be bumpy because of what of that bumpiness. I feel like we've got to be careful. We do not want to go on these up and down or back and forth. Worst thing that could ever happen, man, is the Fed cuts rates, inflation soars, they start hiking again. Whew, watch out if that ever happens, man. So that's not what they want. Uh, they're looking at three cuts throughout the year. And yeah, I would imagine you're talking about maybe, maybe going June, but June's the second quarter. Okay, June is the second quarter. It's the sixth month of the year, folks. July is the seventh month of the year. So that gets you into the third quarter. Nonetheless, a little Fed speak. And with that, we jump over to yields. You got the 10 year right now. Yeah, just chopping around. We're sitting at about 4.1. We finish it up with the dollar. Keep your eye on that dollar index, 103.53. And we check in on gold as well. Gold at 2015. Folks, thanks so much for starting your trading day right here at TFNN. Stay tuned. We got a man, Basil Chapman. He's coming up next with the Tiger Technician's Hour. Have a great Thursday, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Have a great one.